what the hell happened to Demon Slayer. In the wake of Demon Slayer's rise in popularity, thanks in part due to Ufotable's brilliant work on the anime adaptation and the latest Demon Slayer movie, I wanted to bring up how I thought about the series' closure in the manga panels. I thought it was terrible. Now wait! Before you hit that dislike button, hear me out. I know someone hating on Demon Slayer is basically a death sentence to your YouTube video, if not your whole channel, but I don't really hate Demon Slayer. In fact, I, I, I pretty much love it. So much so that I think the resolution that it got was entirely disrespectful to the story and the fans that love the series so much. Now, hold my hand and let's go through the journey that my little brain went through into thinking Demon Slayer's ending sucked butt holes. I can't believe I have to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway because I'm pretty sure someone down in the comment section is going to complain about it if I don't say it. So, this video is chock full of spoilers for the ending of Demon Slayer's storyline. Not really any spoiler for the bits and pieces that happen in between, but it is a spoiler for the culmination of the series. So get out of here if you don't want to be spoiled. But if I'm being honest, it sucked anyway, so it probably doesn't matter. In order to explain my thoughts properly, we first have to discuss how proper storytelling can tell a proper conclusion to a story. You can have different structures in how to write a story like Dan Harmon's story circle or, or the hero's journey are some examples that are on top of my head. But one thing that is constant to making great ending is expectations. Excuse me, let me reword that. In order to conclude a story, be it short form or a long narrative, you need to have hype. A good example of this is the fight between Tanjiro and Rui. Even before the fight happened, we as the audience were all speculating on what would happen. From the moment Tanjiro was given the knowledge that there was an upper moon in the area, we knew that shit was going to go down. Given Tanjiro's journey so far was to meet, or in better words, defeat, one of Muzan's upper moons in order to save his little sister Nezuko, we knew that this fight was going to be big. The only question that was popping up on our heads was, exactly how big. And when they finally meet, we see Tanjiro get absolutely bodied. We were made to believe that he doesn't even have the faintest chance in even scratching Rui. Hurting Nezuko, ridiculing relationships, hurting Nezuko, abusing everyone around him, hurting Nezuko. We all wanted Rui to take an L. Despite the current situation, with Tanjiro's last struggle, believing that this might be the end for him, that this might be his last breath, is when he remembers a memory of his father's teachings. What might have seemed insignificant at the time is now going to be a turning point of the fight. With all the emotions welling up and his father's words and teachings engraved into his body, he lets go. Yakusokunanda. The moment we get introduced to the sun breathing, the brother sister teamwork, the soundtrack, all of it was the definition of hype. When one of the rare moments of anime being in trending on Twitter, and suddenly people are fans of anime, this is why we watch anime. Now that I have given a proper example and explained what hype is, let us now talk about the ending. The fight with Muzan started with everyone basically exhausted out of their minds. Everyone just got done beating the upper moon demons in order to push through to where Muzan is. So by the time they do started fighting the big bad Muzan, everyone is already running on fumes. A good analogy would be like trying to beat the elite four and the champion, but you forgot to buy potions and revives before you started. So even if you do end up beating the elite four, all you're left with is your HM slave with 11 HP. I think these next few panels that I'm about to show you are what's inherently wrong about the ending of Demon Slayer.
Now, if you didn't notice, I'll tell you why this scene is the exact opposite of what they should have done. I'll call it quote unquote downplay because when I did look up antonyms for the word hype, I wasn't sure if they meant what I wanted to say. So we're calling it downplay for today. So throughout the moves on fight, statements that downplay both parties' abilities are thrown out. Maybe almost every chapter. They've built Muzan up to be this super big bad that is really hard to kill even with all the pillars working together that they would stand no chance against him. So I get that they wanted to put a handicap on him so that it's a lot more realistic to why the demon slayer's side isn't wiped out within 5 minutes or so. This is thanks in due part to Tamayo, a demon who was created by Muzan who has agonized over him still being alive. So she created a drug that incredibly weakens Muzan. But the constant reminder that the characters say that basically means... Wow, they are so weak right now. Far weaker than they should be. They should look so much more badass if they weren't as weak right now. That's good for my side because the enemy is so weak, but um, I'm also really weak so I can't bring out my full potential. So we're both really weak. D damn I can't even imagine the spectacle if we were both fighting at full strength. Maybe, maybe it would have been amazing. Oh well, did I mention how weak we both are right now? D did I mention that we're like, dude, dude, we're not even fighting at full strength because we, we can't. It's We're so weak. The constant reminder that I'm missing out on a fight that could have been if the characters were at full strength is what ruined it for me. I literally didn't believe that it was the last arc until the last chapter of the series. Because in my head, I thought that there was no way that they would end it like that. End it with basically neither Muzan nor Tanjiro going all out. I convinced myself that there would be a time skip that would show Tanjiro actually mastering the breath of the sun and not flailing around like a little kid. I mean, if you look at this guy, I mean, look at all the potential in there. Look at all the potential that this guy could have brought to the table. It would have been, dare I say it, it would have been hype, okay? But to my disappointment, the series ended not with a bang, but a whimper. With two characters failing to live up to their proper potential, and the audience, especially the fans, missing out on a fight that could have been great if not the best that the series could have offered. I just can't help but feel like the mangaka did this on purpose. Thanks, Tamayo. Eh, I guess it's alright. <laughs>